Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to build this login page using HTML and CSS3. So you may find different videos in YouTube for building this login page but the reason I made this video is because most of the videos out there doesn't have voice and many videos are pretty huge. So this video will help you create this awesome looking sign up page and or login page using a small HTML and CSS code and a step to step procedure from the scratch. So let's get started. First I will go to my notepad plus plus where you can write the code. You can use notepad as well. So I will go the file and create a new file and let's say the uh, I will say the file name as login to 3.html because I have already logged into so just save it so inside this we will write our HTML and CSS code first I will include a doc type doc type is included so that I will I can say it that I am using HTML5 version now I will include a HTML tag and a close HTML tag as well. Now inside the head tag, I will write my title. The title will be always displayed at the top of your web page. So let's say title, let's say the name of the title be Let's say it's a login page. You can make the sign up page same as well using this login page. So I will write it's a login page. Let's just save it and show you how it actually looks. Go to run and launch it in Chrome. So as you can see, there's a login title here. So now we are done with the title. Now we will come with the main part that is a body. So first I will include a body tag. and a close body tag as well. So the first thing for a login page is the text area where we write our name or password. So for including text area, we will include a tag which is form. I will include a close tag as well. So inside this form, I need a text area. So before writing the text area, we need another tag which is a table. So the reason I'm making use of table is because I will make the table one column as the input area and the other column as the text area. So for showing you how does a table looks like. So this is the table where the input area is on the one side and the text area is on the other side. So this is not mandatory that we are using every time we need to use table. You can use spacing but it's a lot of hectic job. So I made easy by making use of table where I can differentiate the name and the text area with the help of columns with the help of tables so just inside the table i will say the first part is the table header the table header is th so i will write the table header as login page and i will close the table header so inside this table header i need to include an attribute the reason i am including attribute is because so as you can see, this is the header, but it does not contains a row. But as you can see, the down set contains two rows. So how can we merge these two rows into one? We can merge it using a cold span attribute. It's cold span. We need to write equal to two. How much rows we need to merge? That number we should write inside it. So I'm writing th cold span equal to two. That means I'm merging the two rows into one. So now I'm done with the th part. Now I will go to my row. For including the row, you need to include tr and a close tag tr as well. So inside this rows, I will make a two column. First is for the text area and second is for the input area. So first a column, you will write td for the first column and a close tag as well. And the second column td and a close tag. So the first column is a text area. We will write the text. I will write name and the second column is the text area so i will write input it is the form uh, subtypes so i will write input type equal to text and let's increase the size to 60 
size is uh, used to increase the width of this text area so i will just save it and show you how it is till now it's working let's launch it on chrome for login page we don't need to show the borders of the table that's why i'm not including the border tag but as you can see the two rows is merged into one for the header tag and i have included the size uh, 260 of the text area the same goes for password as well so i will just copy it and just paste it downside okay now change the name part to password and the input type to password as well let's save it and refresh the page so as you can see we have name and a password now we need to include a submit button so for including the submit button in the middle we need to include uh, another header tag which is th and i will write cold span as well same for the heading tag which i first used for login i will write is equal to 2 and i will write uh, so submit button so i will write input type equal to for submit button we need to include a type which is submit then i will write value value is a default value which will be placed in the button so i will write submit let's just save it and see if it's working refresh it yeah it's working so now we have a form which contains a login page name and a password it's typos never mind so we have the name, password and the submit button. So now we have done with the HTML code now. Now let's move to the style part. We need to style this. So for styling it, we will use a CSS3. So I will write a style. You can include a new style uh, file as well, but I'm including in the same file. So inside the style, I need to include a selector. First, I will make changes into the form. So I will say form and then a curly bracket. So inside this form, first we need to uh, let's say we need to change the background. As you can see, the form background is of gray color. So we're including the gray color, I will write I will write background color, then RGBA. R stands for red, G stands for green, B stands for blue, and A stands for the intensity. So let's say I want a gray color. So for gray color, I think it's 9, 35, 47, and it's 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is for the intensity of the color. Let's just save it and see if it works. So where is our it's a login page here? Let's just refresh it. Yeah, it's working. As you can see, it's a pretty gray color. So the width is uh, of the full size by default. So I need to uh, decrease the width size. So I can use max width be 620 pixel. Save it and refresh it. As you can see, the size is decreased. I will make it. Yeah, 620 is pretty good. So I have a background color. Now I need to include it in the middle. So for moving this part into the middle, I will say I want to move the margin left part. I want to move this part 25% from the left side. I will include margin left, then a percent sign, then margin right 25% and margin top as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving the whole form tag from the left, right and the top part. Let's say the top part to be 15%, no, 12% will be quite good, I guess. Let's just save it and refresh it. As you can see, it's in the middle. The As you can see, the background color is increased in this right side. So I can decrease it by saying, let it be 600 pixels. Save it. So now we have the form. So now we have the form, but the form looks like a condensed. So I need to improve the size of the form. So for improving the size, I will include a cell padding attribute. So just go to the table. So this is the table. So inside this table, I will write cell padding. Let it be, I will make it as 50. 
just save and see. So as you can see, the size is increased quite a lot. So I don't want this much size. So I will say cell padding to be 30. Refresh it. Yeah, it looks good, but let's make it 25. And refresh it. Yeah, it's look good, but the background part is too nearer to the right side. So I need to improve the size here as well. So as you can see, as a trial basis, error and trial basis when I'm making the web pages because I don't know the actual size. Yeah, so it looks good now. So now we have the form which contains the name, password and the text area and the login name as well and a submit button. But now it doesn't look good because the login page size is small and the name here is not looking good. So I need to improve the size. So I will first select the table header part. Inside this curly bracket, I will say font size. Let's make it 30. Save it. It's not working. I guess it's font size 30 pixel. I need to write. Refresh it. Yeah. So the login page, as you can see, the text is quite bold. Now for improving the size of the text area the input text part as well i will go to the column because it's in the column part then i will say i want the column to be font size let's make it 20 save it and refresh it it's pixel i again forgot the pixel part sorry save it and refresh it so I can see that it looks good now. So now we are done with the form part. Now we need to include a background image. So for including the background image, I will insert the body. First I will select the body because the background image make changes to the whole web page. So I will select the body part. Inside the body part, I will write background, then URL then inside this URL I need to write the name of the file as my HTML code is in the same file as of my image so I will just include the name but if your image is in the other file just use the path so uh, let's say I want to include the image uh, yeah back G let's see the properties extension as well which is back G dot JPG okay so I'll go to my code again I'll write back g dot jpg I just save it and refresh the page so as you can see the image here is not displayed the whole image is not displayed it's because I have not included the size of the image so I need to include the size as well I will say background size cover C O V E R. Save it. So it means that I need to cover the whole web page with my background image. So go to my web page, refresh it. So as you can see, it looks good now, but uh, there's uh, one thing remaining because you can't see the login part here and the button here also is not good. So we'll make changes to the button as well. First, I will make changes to the login part. So I will first I will improve the size as well. Let's say it's 40 pixel. Okay. Now inside the body part, I need to uh, make the whole text as white because our background part is black. So we need to include the text part as white so that is easily visible. So I will write inside the background body. I will write the color to be white. Let's just save it and show you. The only remaining part is the uh, button. So for making changes in the button, first I will make the button name as first I will write class equal to submit so that I can identify it in the style part. This is the CSS part. So I made the name as class. So for accessing it inside the style, I will write dot then the style uh, that class name which is submit. So I will make a curly bracket. So inside this curly bracket, I will make the changes that we want. First, I need to improve the size. So for improving the size of the button, I will use the padding. 
So inside this padding, I will write 6 pixel from the top, 60 pixel from the right, 6 pixel from the left, 60 pixel from the left. So what I'm doing is I'm increasing the size 6 pixel from the top, 60 pixel from the right, 6 pixel from the bottom and 60 pixel from the left. Let's just save it and show you. So this is how a button now looks like. Now we need to color the button. So I will write same background color as we have used in the form. I'll write background color and we'll make it RGB, RGBA for the intensity as well. So for black color, I will write it 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is black color and the intensity, let's make it 0 0.7. Let's just save it and show you how it actually looks. So this is how a button looks, but now the color of the button inside it's not uh, white color. So we'll make it white color by saying color and white. So this is how now a button looks like. It's looking quite good, but the as you can see, the text area is not uh, very attractive looking. So we need to improve the size of the text area and the button area. And as well as we need to make the corners of this text area uh, round. So for making the corners of the text area round, I will include a new selector inside the style part, which is a input. So input will make only changes inside the input part. Inside the input part, let's say I want to increase the size. So I will write padding and let's say I want to improve the size padding by 4 pixel. I am not including the 4 parameters which I used earlier because 4 pixel means 4 pixel from all the sides, from the top, right, left, bottom. Let's just save it and show you. As you can see, the text area is improved. Now we need to include the rounded corner. For including rounded corner, let's say border. Then I need to include a radius. So for improving the uh, rounded corner, we need to include border radius. And let's say I will write it as 3 pixels. Let's just save it and refresh it. So as you can see, the border part is pretty bit rounded. I don't know if you can see. Let's just make it 6 pixels so that you can see it clearly. Refresh it. Yeah, here it is. The text area part is rounded. So now we are almost done with the code. The only part remaining is to improve the size of the button. So let's go to the button uh, selector that is inside the style sheet. I will write the button size to be 20 pixels. Save it and refresh it. As you can see, this is how an awesome website web page looks with the help of HTML and CSS. As you can see, the code is not huge. It's a little code. Yeah, just a 65, hardly 66 lines code. So with the help of this 66 lines code, you can make this awesome looking web page. So yeah, different website you can make just by changing the background. You can make this awesome looking websites. As you can see here, just by changing the background image, you can make this website. So if you have any doubt in this video, please do comment below. And if you want this code, you can find in the description below. Thank you for watching guys. Please do subscribe.